Hi, welcome to my food blog. Hello. Today we made blue cheese and pomegranate risotto with mm. a side salad with some unripe avocado. Where is it? It's somewhere in here. <laughs> there it is. And some toast. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hello. So I'm here with Sarah. And Sarah is from the US of A, from Oregon, the best coast. East Coast, Beast Coast. West Coast, Best Coast. But anyways, we are both living here in Ostrava. Czech Republic. Woo! Woo! Do we have a Czech flag? No. We do not have a Czech flag. I don't have a um, Czech flag. Just wave this around and pretend <laughs> it's a Czech flag. Woo! Czech Republic! <sighs> Woo! So we've both been here for four months and we thought we'd share our views on the differences between the Czech Republic and good old America. So, here we go. So, one of the main differences that we have witnessed here in the Czech Republic is the shoe thing. The shoe thing. So, um, whenever you go into a Czech person's house, um, it is like forbidden to wear shoes at all times. It could be considered the eighth deadly sin in the Czech Republic. So, you, you walk into your house and you immediately take off your shoes. That's the first thing you do. You have to do this. You might be deported if you don't. Yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a law. It's a, it's actually something that actually carries over. I would say into into school and students have to take yeah, off their true. outdoor shoes and wear what they call slippers, but aren't always. It's Crocs. Yeah. It's Crocs. It's really Crocs. You okay? So the Croc thing. That's a yeah. big thing. Yeah. Because people wear Crocs non ironically here. Yes, they're like, actually a, a maybe a fashion choice. Is that too strong? That's too strong? maybe I don't know. But people actually wear them and they don't get, people don't get made fun of for wearing Crocs. It's a totally normal thing. They're normal, yeah. yeah. They're not just like your garden shoes or something that you like are very ashamed to be seen in public. These are very accepted. It's high fashion. Yeah, really. So get on Crocs. Uh, Czech drivers um, are lunatics. Uh, they drive so fast. And some, some streets, you know, you're like scared for your life to walk across, like um, na Durazhny. Oh yes, I would agree with that. And also these streets are scary too because there's trams and there's trolley buses and there's normal buses and you just don't know what direction. You don't know in which way you're gonna die. Yeah. So like, you fear for your life every time you Constantly. cross the street. They, they sometimes stop for pedestrians. Yeah. Sometimes. Trams, buses, cars. Everything, everything. Uh, to add to that, public transportation is a major difference. In the Czech Republic, there is so much. Like, in, here in Ostrava, we have trams, buses, trolley buses, tr trains. Definitely trains. And um, in the US, you just drive everywhere. You can, like, drive eight hours from one state and, like, still be in the same state. There's no public trans good public transportation option, unless you're in the major cities. But in the Czech Republic, you can take trains to pretty much everywhere. Every small town. Yeah. Every small town. Every small town. There's regional trains where you stop, it feels like, every, like, ten feet at another small <laughs> um, town. Yeah, that's true. That that's you've true. literally never heard of, and you're like... Village. Kush, 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 yes. Village. Yes. Okay. So many. And you just look out, and you're like, I can't even see the train platform, because it's just... Yeah, it's a great thing. Yeah, it's awesome that people can. It's really cheap, too. Public transit! Woo! Check out this giant-ass water bottle that they have in the Czech Republic. And you find these everywhere. These are so big. Like, compare this to our heads. Everyone uses these. And usually yeah. it's actually not plain water. As you can see, it's, it's strawberry, strawberry green tea. Strawberry green tea. And it, it's fizzy. This translates <laughs> to good water. Good water. Good water. Giant water. Giant water. Yeah, everyone uses these. You can buy People them. just bring these to school all the time. Yeah, they sell them in the store. Every store. Six packs and everyone just... Yeah. I don't understand because people... Don't really have cars, so they're taking these giant, <laughs> giant packs. Giant, they're just walking around with them. On the on the yeah. public transit and everywhere, and you're like <laughs> people like drinking out of these on the yeah. tram. Yeah, it's crazy. Another thing that is important to know is that Czech people always greet a person mm -hmm. when they enter a store. Anyone, they always say Dobrý den. Dobrý den. And they always say goodbye. And that's let know. You have to say this. This is this is mandatory. Actually, this is something that I think when I was in Prague and I would see tourists enter and leave a store and not say these words, you could immediately tell that they, they weren't. They were foreigners, yeah. Because yes. it's considered rude in Czech culture to not do it. Yeah. So Even on the train, actually. Yeah, people do that on the train, too. The strangers, um, if you're in one of those carriages, yeah. you have to say, as you Ms. leave. Yeah. And it's interesting because I would say it's Czech politeness isn't the same as maybe you would say American politeness, um, but in these certain kinds of cases, 
specifically entering and leaving a store, it, you have to. You have to be polite in those ways. Mm -hmm. this is Wait, the, I'm gonna get the napkins. This, <laughs> so something, something that is maybe more random is that it seems that Czech people don't believe in uh, napkins. You never can find a napkin on in the any table. restaurant. Any restaurant. Any you're restaurant, eating your really yeah. messy like kebab. It's spilling all over your fingers. And they don't give you napkins. You don't get a napkin. They don't give you napkins. There's nothing. Oh, something else related to that. Um, tissues. When Czech people blow their nose, they sound like a tornado. And there's no shame. No shame. Anywhere. You, you do it You do it as loud as possible. You do it in class. Okay. Do you mind if I? Go for it. Like normal, just sit and listen to the teacher. Yeah, you're just, you're just in class and you let it rip. Yeah. And there's no, no shame. Nobody looks at you, no second glance. Okay. Very different than mm -hmm. the US where I would say that we, we try to do that maybe more like not in public, maybe in the bathroom. Here they're like, no, no, no one gives anywhere. Me. On the street, in a restaurant, on school, tram. in your workplace, all the time. You just hear these loud noises and you're like, oh, it's just a Czech person blowing oh, noise. Yeah. And maybe, maybe that's why there's no napkins because they think that everyone has tissues because they all blow their nose They constantly. do carry around tissues all the time. Yeah, so maybe those tissues are meant to be napkins too. I don't know, but I wish there were napkins because I'm a messy eater and I could really benefit from those napkins. Yeah, I know. So the Czech education system is very different than the US education system. For instance, like um, switching classes, because in the US, you switch classes for every class. You just go to a new classroom every 40 minutes. Whereas in the Czech Republic, and I think most of Europe, you you stay in the same class pretty much all day, except for some classes. A teacher walks in, everyone stands up, uh, the teacher says, Dobri den, posate se, and everyone sits down again, that lesson goes on, teacher leaves, a new teacher comes in, everyone stands up, posate se, everyone sits down, and that lesson starts. It's all very um, lectury, like um, in terms of teaching style. Also, in terms of teachers, one big difference, I would say, is that Czech students have a teacher, one teacher for one subject, for as long as they are at the school. So, the, yeah, some people have had teachers for like six years. Yeah, I, years. I work at an eight-year gymnasium, and some of my students have had the same geography teacher for the eight years that they have been there. It's crazy. It's crazy. As someone who had a new teacher for a new subject every year, I cannot even imagine yeah. having the same teacher from the time that I'm 11 all the way until I'm 19. That's insane. And Czech, uh, Czech school lasts a year longer. Yeah. In America. Yeah. They start. So graduate in America, 19. Mm -hmm. Mandatory school is until 15, and then there are various options that students can do from technical schools to gymnasiums to um, trade schools. There's lots of different options. Another big difference is the the desk. The desk is. is oh yeah, different. yeah. Because they don't have individual desks like you have in America, where you have the rows of desks. Yeah. And um, they have desks like in pairs, yeah. so you sit with someone. And these people, time. because the, the Czech students have the same class, they enter with the class and they stay with their class for the four or eight years that yeah, they're so there. Yeah, so there's like a really strong relationship between the class. Yeah, they sit. They usually sit by their same desk partner for the, the entire the whole, time. The whole, the whole school. So this person is like yeah. your best friend, maybe your worst enemy, you have every <laughs> single class with yeah, them. Yeah, pretty much. Except for maybe seminars. Those mm -hmm. might be the only different things. Um, the other thing is that this Czech school schedule doesn't have a lot of flexibility. Students no, are required. Yeah, to take this, the same classes. Yeah. And the only choices they get are what are called seminars. Seminars um, and languages. Yeah. Seminar. Seminar. Watch the two Americans struggle with the hardest Czech syllable. Je, je, every, every single Czech person when they find out that you are not a Czech speaker, they will come to you and they will ask you to say some words or to say their famous tongue twister. She's a, she's a, she's, she's a nicht Czech. She's a, 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 Wait, what does that mean? Silver. 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 Not silver, yeah. Check. Something about birds on a roof with bullets. I don't know. It's a long it's one. Are the birds dying? I don't know. Yeah. We don't speak Czech. We don't speak Czech. Learning, but struggling. We're going to talk about food. So uh, these are juices that, you know, people bring these to school all the time. Like this. Like the size. They're just like. 
They sold it at every store. Yeah. It's either this or like, what's the other brand that everyone has? It's a blue box. I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what it's called. Don't know what it's called. And these are like what um, every Czech mom bakes for Christmas. Like every Czech person is like born like out of the womb, like knowing how to bake. So they make these, which are called sukrovi, and they're really good. They're so yeah. small every and cute, and they have like, I love them. flavors. And they make like 30,000 of these every Christmas in every house. Every, every house. Yeah. This, this, this is a cheap croissant that we bought from Albert. <laughs> but what really I think is important is like Czech bread, man. Czech There's so many types of bread. And so their names, they're all different. Like you can't yeah, yeah. call, like this is a croissant. You couldn't call this Rolik, for example. This is another type of Czech bread. Uh, you try to like <coughs> cut your bread together. They're like, no, this is, this is Hoska, Hoska. And they eat bread all the time. Breakfast and dinner are predominantly bread based traditionally. Actually, the word for bakery has one of those favorite favorite Czech letters. Pekka Ashtvi. Pekka Ashtvi. Oh, we also have a Fedorka, which is like a chocolate. Chocolate thing. hazelnut, yeah. Pretty yeah. good. They're this pretty one good. is sad because it doesn't have the fun little devil. Some of them have a nice. Some of them have a devil on them. Uh, they eat at different times too. Lunch is the main meal of the day instead of dinner, like in the US. So they eat lunch at like two or three. It always this, starts with a yeah. soup. And it's always hot. It's always hot. Yeah. It doesn't matter the temperature you can't outside. Have cold lunch. You have to have hot lunch, mm -hmm. and it has to have no vegetables. I think it's a requirement. Yeah, Czech people do. Do they eat vegetables? I don't know. Not unless it's cabbage. Cabbage all the time. Does cabbage count as a vegetable? Potatoes. <laughs> I'm, yeah. never, I'm never eating potatoes no. again. I'm potatoes sure. come in literally no. every form here. From yeah. mash to in dumplings to in every meal. I eat potatoes like four times a week. That's yeah. normal. Yeah. Your meat. You gotta have your meat. So much meat. So much meat. All the time. Like every it, kind of meat. It'd be so hard not to eat meat. Blood either. sausage. You've got like I ate goose one time. I would pork, say pork, pork is like pork is the pork. Pork is the yeah, highest. Highest thing. And then like chicken, beef. Yeah. You can be assured that pork will be on the menu, but anything else is in yeah. the air. And sometimes the vegetarian items on menus will have meat in them. Like if you order like smajak, which is like their fried cheese thing, they'll sometimes serve it with bacon. Yeah, because you know bacon isn't really. It's, it's really not meat. a meat. It's, it's not, not a meat. meat. What do you it's mean? Like, what do you mean, man? It's, it's the check. It's the check <laughs> lettuce. Really. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it serves the yeah. purpose. The smajak you see it. That is something that you maybe could you know call vegetarian, but it is. It's literally a block of fried cheese. Yeah, it's kind of like so... mozzarella sticks, you know? But like, it's like five mozzarella sticks all together. It's the cheesiest. And thing usually, like... usually served with uh, potatoes and tartar potatoes. sauce. Potatoes. So tartar sauce. They love tartar sauce. Yeah. Don't even get me started. Yeah. So it's it's a really interesting combination because you have your fried cheese, you have your potatoes, and you have your tartar sauce. And this is this is the meal. And and the, the potatoes, the buttery potatoes, are like cutting the the friedness of the cheese, and you're just yeah. like. It's not healthy. I how how have I not like that? Like, uh, it's usually made with item, which is the cheapest cheese you can find. Uh -huh. You buy it for like 50 cents. It kind of yeah. is a really unique flavor. I don't know how to describe it. Plastic. Yeah, I mean plastic. Maybe plastic. That could be it. Sure. Yeah, but it's cheap, so. So, another thing that is very important to check people is the coat rack. They always hang their coats up, and there's coat racks in every room. Not every room. Every house. Every, every restaurant, restaurant, every part of the restaurant, yeah. trains. The room where we take check lessons has like three. Sarah, Sarah, Sarah. <laughs> Sarah hang your Sarah, coat Sarah, on me. Hang Sarah, your coat on me. Sarah. So in the Czech Republic, they have name days, so your name gets its own holiday. That's pretty much it. And some of them are special, like, um, for example, St. Martin, where you eat goose. And then they have Sylvester, which is New Year's Eve. We're going to talk about <laughs> Czech Christmas. Czech Christmas is a whole ordeal. Ordeal. Yeah. yeah. One big difference celebrated on the 24th. Everything happens on the 24th. Mm -hmm. 24th Everything gift giving. Yeah. Because it's like family, chill, yeah, relaxing. You chill. Yeah. Uh, and it's not a religious holiday. No, no. Because, because the Czech Republic is the least religious country in the world. Yeah. Uh, so even though baby Jesus delivers the presents. Yes, Yes. Yes, For dinner, very special dinner. Carp. Yes. They they buy them live and then they put them in their bathtubs. Yeah. And they're huge. I don't know if they're, anyone has ever like seen a carp. This, this big? Yeah. In the run-up to Christmas, fishermen drain the water from these lakes so all the fish get trapped in large nets at the surface. And then they use small nets to collect the fish. A simple way to make sure they've caught all the carp in the lake. 
and then it's loaded into trucks and taken to Prague. In the week before Christmas, you'll see huge tanks full of carp on the streets all over the city. It's traditional to buy the carp and take it home alive. So there's like giant tubs of fish right now that are just sitting outside grocery stores. Yeah, you can just go up there and be like, it's the one I want. And we still don't know how it works though. We don't yeah. know how like people get their fish and they bring it to their car. Yeah. Or on the tram, man. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just waiting for the day when I see someone on the public trams with like a giant fish in their hand. I'm like, like, yeah. It's like that's the most check thing ever. I think so. It's funny because many people actually don't like this carp. They eat it because they feel that they have That's a lot of bones. So most people like, I think, the potato salad. The carp, not so much. So if you don't really like carp, sometimes there is schnitzel or steak in the Vienna style. That's another air spray. Rizek. Yes. Yes. Prior to this, though, they actually don't eat, usually. They fast. Yeah, they yeah. fast. And do you know why? Enlighten me. <laughs> <laughs> There's this story that if you don't eat, I heard it's meat, but I think you can generally just adopt it, not eating at all. If you don't eat at all, you will see the golden pig. What? I never, I've never, i never told this. Oh, I've been told this so many times. What? Yeah, so that's why they don't eat. They fast because they're hoping to see the golden pig. Yo, I'm shook. No one has seen it. Sounds like some like hallucinations, like. <laughs> yeah, because you're so drugs. hungry. Kids like don't eat, and then they can eat a lot of, a lot of the meal. A lot of carp. Yeah, a lot a of carp. A lot of fish. Uh, and a lot of the. Sukurovi. Yes. Mm -hmm. Other traditions, for example, they cut an apple in half, and. They put money under their plate. Yeah, they do that too. When they cut the apple, they're really looking for like they're hoping to see a star with the seeds, and mm -hmm. if they see that, that means they have good luck. They also will sometimes throw the shoe or single girls yeah, yeah, throw yeah, the yeah, shoe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, behind them. This. I think um, this is more of a Slovakia thing. Yeah, but they do it here, I've been told. And so if the shoe is pointing out the door, it means you'll leave. Yeah. But uh, usually that's through marriage, but not always. Um, you want to throw a shoe right now? Uh, no. What? <laughs> Shit! Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> there was also the metal one. I don't know if you've heard, they like pull, they pour metal into water to see uh, what shapes it is. Yeah, yeah, that's, they lead. It's lead. Yeah, lead, lead. Literally lead. lead. Yeah, so they're literally pouring lead. Um, into water. To tell the oh, they, they take little walnuts, cut them in half, and then put a candle in them, and then float them on water in like the sink. And if they stay together, it means that the family will stay together, and if they separate, it means that there might be trouble on the horizon. They have the advent wreath. Um, mm -hmm. Where you light a candle, light a different candle each week. Mm -hmm. All happen on the 24th. Sylvester. <laughs> Sylvester. Yes, New Year's. Big. Big deal. It's a big deal. Big party in. And you can assume that there's lots of alcohol at all of these events. Okay. So the Czech Republic statistically is the number one beer drinking country in the world. And interestingly enough, it's not Pilsen. Radagast. It's, but no, I was looking on this like map, I don't know how accurate it was, but it was a beer that I really hadn't seen that much of. Wait, was what, like, what was it? It's it with a G, I think. Beer is a big thing. They have a big pub culture here. Yeah. Because everyone goes to the pub all the time. And actually, the, the saying is true. They say that beer is cheaper than water in this country. It's true. It's legitimate. It's legitimate. It's, it's legitimate. The worst true. because I, you know, in America, you kind of get used to getting your free, your free water with everything. But no, uh, it's true. Sometimes it's you have to pay with water. Yeah. Pay, pay for water, pay for bathroom sometimes. Yes, oh yes, It's the worst thing about Europe. Yeah, I would say so. Especially when you're like in like transit hubs. So like in like yeah, train yeah, stations yeah. or airports or whatever. And you're like, 50 crowns for this bathroom and you're like, uh, no, no, no. I can hold it. I can wine wine. Um, I was I was doing a food map of the Czech Republic and one student said to me that the, the only thing that varied by region in the Czech Republic was the type of alcohol. That they drink. Yeah. So I think that's pretty accurate. You know, in southern Southern Moravia, you have it's all about the wine. wine country. Yeah, it's like Italy down there, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. And then you have here. It's like beer, beer, vodka, vodka, Polish vodka. Yeah. Yeah. Italy. Just like give your kids, you know, hard vodka. Yeah, yeah. It's that's, fine. It's, it's okay. So, so um, I have encountered something that is a little bit weird, and that is that the dads and families often walk around without pants. All the time. Okay, so I live with host families here, and both of my host dads, the ones that I've lived with so far, have done this, and it's so... Just, it would not be acceptable in America. <laughs> they just walk around shirtless, uh, <laughs> without pants. Oh my gosh! And they 
do not care who's around to see. Even my guests? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so, so strange. So make sure to like, comment, subscribe down below if you enjoyed the video. I uh, hope this was an educational experience for all of us. And stay tuned for more content. Thanks for having me on your channel. Excited to share some of my She's a vlogger now, cultural actually. wisdom. Yeah. Five YouTube. million subscribers. YouTube in famous. 10 days. Jake Paul step down. <laughs> Woo! Czech Republic. <laughs> Ostrava. Shrek, Shrek Republic. <laughs> Ahoy, tschüss!